Our next speaker, Paolo, uh, I find his history a little bit interesting uh, from my perspective. Uh, all of a sudden, I saw someone posting all these interesting UDP optimizations for socket lookup and SKB handling. I was like, who's this guy? And over time, his performance improvements as a percentage in various different tests were extremely impressive. And his knowledge of the stack uh, in this area was a, really showed that he knew what he was doing and he knew how to achieve the goals that he was looking after. And uh, so be prepared if he attacks another subsystem that he's going to do similar awesome work, with performance improvement. And uh, that's what he's going to talk about here. Paolo? Thank you. I'm Paolo Abeni. I work for Red Hat. And I'm not going to talk to you about XDP. Uh, this is a work uh, we made with uh, uh, fellow colleagues uh, Marcelo that I already presented, Elko and Davide. Uh, so uh, we see why we currently have two distinct OVS data paths inside the kernel. And since this is about performances, we will discuss our reference testing scenario. Then I throw a bunch of numbers and figures. And yes, it's not about a BPF, but still we will see if ABFF changes a lot, the thing even here. So uh, why we have two different uh, uh, obvious, kernel, obvious data paths inside the kernel? Uh, thanks to uh, William to presentation, already all of you know about OVS and the kernel data path. Uh, the old OVS kernel data path has been added a long time ago. So it's consider it to be the faster implementation available, and it's uh, functionally complete. Uh, recently, uh, to support uh, hardware offloaded, uh, another data path has been implicitly added, the DC software data path, because we use DC, the TCU, to offload the flows to the hardware and to add a feature uh, to support an hardware feature, we need to support also the same feature in the TC uh, software infrastructure. Uh, and that gave me to another kernel data path inside, uh, OVS data path inside the kernel. The TT is considered slower and lacks, still lacks some, of, uh, fe some features that are required, for example, on connection tracking. Even if this is in the work as far as I know. Uh, so uh, this is our reference testing scenario, the PVP uh, testing scenario. PVP stands for physical to virtual to physical. Uh, the device under test is back to back to connected with the traffic generator. And the other NIC receiving the traffic from the other generator is enslaved to an OBS switch which also comprise a tap device, which is used to give network connectivity to a, a virtual machines that receive the traffic via a virtual device. Inside the VM, a DPDK application is running, test PMD. Such application read uh, the packet from the virtual device and loop them back. Uh, the, uh, OVS switch, uh, in, inside the OVS switch, uh, we have configured the number of symmetric flows so that each packet received on the physical NIC is forwarded to the uh, to device and to the VM. The VM loop them back. And another flow in the OVS forward the packet received from uh, the to device to the same physical device where the packet were originally received. Uh, well, that's not have a real, let's say, uh, application in any uh, real world scenario, but it's used to stress uh, as much as possible the forwarding ca capabilities of OVS. Uh, and this is why we use this, that uh, DPDK application to avoid uh, bot bottlenecks inside uh, the VM. So let's see the figures. These are collected on top of Linux, Linux uh, for uh, 17. 
uh, the purple columns uh, show the performances for the OVA scan data path, the other for the TC software data path. Uh, we made several different tests, changing the number of concurrent flows. Uh, we can see that the, kernel, the plain old OVS kernel data path is slightly faster on average than the TC one. And yeah, performance are not that bad because with roughly 800,000 packets per second, we can cope with a 10 gigabit flows using max and two packets. Uh, uh, we are actually using a small um, packets in this test, 64 byte packets, just to stress the forwarding more. But this test is perhaps uh, a bit misleading because we are using a single receive queue inside uh, uh, the hardware NIC, which is not a usual default. So let's see how things change when we use uh, multiple receive queue in our uh, hardware NIC. Uh, in this case, we are using uh, 16 uh, uh, receive queues, which is the default for the hardware we add at our ends. And we can see that the OVS kernel part is still uh, miserably faster than the TC software one, but performances uh, dropped a lot when we had uh, multiple concurrent flows. Uh, in our test, we used L3 flows, meaning that uh, each flow had a different source IP, destination IP address, meaning that different flows with default RSS configuration landed to different uh, receive queue, uh, to different ing to different NIC receive queue. Uh, so it is very bad slowdown could less, uh, let us think about some contention problem. We can uh, try to inspect with perf if there is really some contention. Uh, on the left, we see the top, ah, step back. Uh, in our scenario, the bottleneck was in the VOS process, which is a kernel thread in charge of passing the buffer, uh, the kernel buffer up to the user space and vice versa. Uh, on the left, we see the topmost perf offender for the VOS process when we had one single receive queue, and in the right, uh, when we had 16 receive queue. This with the uh, OV open switch uh, kernel data path, similar result with the TC software one. While the offenders list change quite a bit, there is no clear sign of contention. And it's quite an obvious, at least to me, to find there why we are so slow with 16 queues. Uh, so we can use some more help from PERF, uh, looking at the cold graph accounting, still for the VOS process. And we can see that the handle rx function is taking most of the CPU time, uh, while the handle tx function is taking only a little bit of the, our CPU time. The handle rx function is responsible for processing the packets sent by the kernel uh, via the tune device up to the, the user space. And we may think that some function is really, really slower than the opposite direction, but it's not. If we look at the uh, tune device stats, we see that actually the uh, VOS process is processing much more packets in the Rx direction than the, in the opposite one. And we may wonder why. Yeah. And this is due to some limits that are, are coded inside the VOS process itself. The VOS process is responsible for scheduling uh, the processing of the two direction, that is for the seeding when processing uh, Rx packet and when processing text, Tx packet. And it has encoded a um, uh, byte-based limit for both direction, 
but up to 417. It also had a, a packet base limit only for the TX direction. We were eating per packet and that limited a lot the amount of work we could do in the TX direction. And that was the cause of TC balance. Once that we have C, which was the root cause, the fix was trivial and was uh, implementing the same limits in both direction. And that has been done in the 418 release cycle. And we can see how that changed the numbers. Uh, uh, yes. Um, in respect to 417, the performance for multi flows. Uh, scenarios has improved a lot. It's about four, six times more. And we can see that uh, OpenV switch uh, kernel data path is still mis is miserable faster than the TC software one. And now we can try to uh, investigate why. Still, now please don't look at the last two lines. Uh, uh, not soon, at least. Still, we are using some help for, uh, from Perf. Uh, looking at the topmost Perf offender, on the left for the OVS kernel data path, on the right with the ATC software data path. Again, the two lists are quite different, but at least to me, it's not entirely obvious to understand why TC was lower just looking at them. Actually, we can see that the lookup is a little more efficient with the TC compared to the OVS. Uh, with OVS, the first uh, offender is a masked uh, flow lookup, that is uh, the function performing a look, uh, flow lookup. In, with the TC, we are a little bit faster because we reuse the f programmable flow dissector infrastructure. Anyhow. Why we are slower, we need to uh, look at uh, um, some symbol more down the list for the TC software uh, backend. And specifically, we can found this SKB clone function that we don't have with OVS. Per se, it's not very expensive, but it adds overhead all along the stack, and especially for, um, to the SKB memory uh, lifecycle. Um, so, why do we have to clone a packet with TC? This is due to the TC infrastructure that requires that uh, the caller of the TC hook retain ownership of the SKB. So, an action like dropping the packet should be done by the caller of the TC hook. Uh, the, um, piece of this infrastructure that, that does the forwarding is uh, the act mirror uh, action module. And to keep with this uh, constraint, it has to clone the SKB packet, forward to the egress uh, interface the cloned packet, and return to the caller uh, the original one. And uh, in the OVS context, it applied to that packet the controlling action that say, that tell the, co the TC caller to just drop the packet. So we could avoid uh, the clone introducing a new controlling action for the TC infrastructure that implement the uh, forwarding capabilities and use it that controlling action inside the act mirrored uh, module. And that has been done in the uh, 419 uh, release cycle, and we can look at uh, the performance on top of the change. I'm not, uh, here we did not use uh, 419 vanilla because it was not yet out at the time when we collected the data. It's 419RC6. And uh, here we compare the OBS kernel data path uh, on that version with the TC software data path and also to TC software <coughs> data path on the previous kernel version. And we can measure a roughly 10% performance improvement 
but it's softer than that. That is now a little bit faster than the obvious kernel data path. Uh, so, um, so far, uh, I intentionally omitted uh, some points. Uh, one is that uh, the TC software data path uh, due to TC infrastructure, you use an indirect uh, call for each action present in the flows. Uh, in our example, we had a single action per flow, and that gives a re reasonable low overhead. In a real case scenario, we had multiple action per flows, and in that case, red line overhead adapts and will slow down the TC software data path. <coughs> Uh, we look a little bit to apply uh, listification here, um, which is uh, the idea introduced by Edward Cree to uh, pass along the network stack instead of a single SKB, a list of SKB that receive a similar uh, treatment by the networking st stack itself. But it's very difficult to apply here uh, because um, TC has a lot of nested hooks, and this change will be very impressive there. Um, another uh, point of attention is that uh, several uh, uh, TC actions do not, do not sc scale well uh, when multiple uh, queues are involved because they use a uh, spin lock to synchronize the data path with the controlling path. Here the solution relatively simple and it is migrating such, such action to use RCU and this is a work in progress. Currently I think only act PID is a leftover between the action used by the TC software data path. Uh, another thing that could that we could have used to improve for performance is uh, using two separate threads to process uh, the packet, packet, well, one thread to process packet in the Rx direction and another thread to process packet in the Tx direction. Um, and that would have most, almost double the performances, but it would be similar to just adding more virtual queue uh, to the uh, built IO device, uh, since uh, we have, t we would have traded more CPU power for more bandwidth. And finally, on cons consideration about <coughs> the number we have seen, uh, we are still quite far from, let's say, carrier grade uh, requirements, which ask for the usual 14 million packets per second. And we are still also quite far from <coughs> the performance we measure on this kind of hardware with bypass solutions like DPDK, for example. Uh, in this test with DPDK, we measure around two million and a half packets per second with 10,000 concurrent flows. So since we spoke a lot about performances and the holy graal for Resolving performance problems is XDP. We have wondered if XDP would, have, would save us here if we could uh, fill the gap uh, between the kernel data path and bypass solutions. Uh, we have seen that um, ABPF uh, backend for uh, OVS is currently in the work. Uh, we choose not to use that. Instead, we uh, use a simple XDP and BPF program that was in charge of forwarding the packet between the um, physical NIC and the uh, Tune device and vice versa. Uh, we did the choice for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that we wanted to avoid eventual uh, bottleneck present in the BPF uh, OBS implementation at this early stage. And the other and more re relevant one was that we needed to somehow experiment first-hand with uh, XDP. <coughs> uh, 
so we come out with this very trivial implementation <coughs> that is an MPF program that just uh, parsed the packet up to <coughs> the EP layer, uh, look up the EP addresses in a user, get <coughs> user controlled map, and forward the packet via redirect map to the device specified into the map entry. It's very far from being a complete solution. Uh, actually, serves only to this purpose, but gives a reasonable upper bound of what we can see, we, we can obtain with XDP and the BPF, since we do exactly one map lookup, and as is needed for, example, status accounting and one redirect map. So, here are the figures. And we can see that with XTP and BPF, uh, we reach um, uh, almost 1 million and 200,000 packets per second in the single uh, flow scenario, a little less with uh, multiple flows, which is roughly 50% um, uh, more than the ATC software figures. It's quite good. It's a little probably a little less than expected. This is with the default, default configuration. Uh, if uh, that is with um, uh, zero copy in, uh, enabled in uh, the VOST uh, driver. If we disable zero copy, we actually get a miserable speed up and we reach around one million packet, uh, one million and a half packet per second. This is why in the non-zero copy case, there is a sort of fast path between VOS and uh, the tune device that do barking of packets and give a good, gives a good speed up. But still, we are a little bit far from, let's say, bypass solution. <coughs> and we get similar improvement, similar proportion improvement when disabling, disabling zero copy even for the so TC software data path. So, uh, what we can expect from the future? We have seen that uh, XDP, sorry, that ABPF uh, began this in the work for OpenVSwitch and also an AF XDP is in the work for OBS. I personally think that for from a personal, uh, sorry, from a um, performance perspective, only point of view, I have a, a XDP uh, is probably the most promising approach because in our testing, we meet uh, this bottleneck in the um, VOS process and specifically in the function in charge of translating the buffer descriptor from kernel to user space. These two function here and here count for roughly 8% when using the TCS of the data path. <coughs> when using the XDP and BPF uh, program, they weight grow because the packet rate grows also, and it's about 20% or more. Uh, with IFXDP, we probably such cost will go to zero, and so I think it should give good improvement. Another things that we possibly have someday inside the kernel that could help up, get, sorry, that could help us is a UDP zero for forwarded packet uh, that could help only in the scenario that are using a limited uh, number of flows because when the number of flows grows a lot, we will not be able to perform the aggregation. <coughs> yeah. And this is all I have. Uh, so you mentioned some difference between the classifier in TC and OVS. Like in the purview of OVS, we always see the mask uh, flow lookup showing the top. 
And uh, so I wonder what's the, the, the way TC does classification and why it's uh, faster? Uh, yes. Um, TC, the TC software data path uses the programmable fl flow dissector to perform uh, the um, parse, the lookup of the flow inside the flow table. And uh, let me see. Oh, we can see some of uh, function related to the action. And this SKB flow dissect perform the parsing. And this main compare is actually um, the comparison function for the flows. Uh, it's uh, quite costly because, as you noted, the key is quite large for OVS. And this is what we can mean. Uh, probably a custom implementation uh, using uh, uh, long word uh, instead that, that single byte could be faster. Uh, yeah, instead of this which uses its own, own custom lookup function. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bite. I'm, I'm, there's a couple of uh, things I'd, I think would be maybe more interesting to also look into. Is, um, so one thing is the number of d unique masks you have um, can affect this. Um, so like that, that's fundamentally something about the, the way that the lookup works that would, would uh, change the way that the, the, the numbers that you're actually going to get. Because um, like... It's kind of... <laughs> the, the, the idea behind uh, OVS is you've got like um, fairly high level, perhaps like hundreds of thousands of these open flow rules, and you can sort of compile that down into uh, a smaller set. But uh, this smaller set is based on like different bit, um, bit masks against different flows. And so um, depending on how complex your overall higher level um, pipeline is, that pushes down different numbers of masks. Um, so I'd be curious to see um, what this looks like with maybe a slightly more realistic um, benchmark, like maybe set up OVN or something like that, and then just like see. Um, now, you might have to turn off a couple of yeah, the features yeah, if yeah. TC is uh, not yes. supporting all the features uh, yet, uh, but uh, uh, be interested, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're right, meaning that the flow set used here is completely synthetic and is <coughs> quite different from whatever OpenStack or uh, whatever tools installs. Uh, but I I don't have numbers or figures or graphs. I believe that uh, overall, uh, let's say, the lookup cost should not change much. I think what will change more, uh, um, looking at real obvious number, um, OpenStack number, is that this histogram will sink a lot because just because the rule set is much more complex and usually uh, requires several uh, recirculation, meaning that on the same packet we compute several times uh, the uh, hash and we do several lookups uh, per packet. Uh, and in that sense, UD, uh, GRO, even for a limited uh, uh, range of scenarios, could give a uh, good improvement. So for uh, for the XDP redirect, did you use the map variant of yes, the redirect? Yes, yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I look at that the comments inside the either file, and it was pretty clear. Anyone else? Thank you, Paolo. Thank you.